A fake $100 bill used at a restaurant in Montgomery County is identical to counterfeit bills found last month in Georgetown. Some Owsley County officials say this weekend's snowfall was the worst they've ever seen. Coming up, we'll show you how crews are cleaning up. Will they help or hurt Kentucky? State lawmakers and school leaders debating whether they should open charter schools. What supporters and critics of the issue have to say. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. We will get to those stories in a moment, but we're tracking breaking news out of Adair County. Investigators there are on the scene of a deadly explosion at a log home. It happened on M. Coomer Road, about five miles outside of Columbia. The coroner tells us one person is dead and three others are missing. The Adair Progress took this photo. Investigators say only part of the house is still standing, and firefighters are still trying to put out the fire. We do have a crew on the way to that scene, and we'll bring you more information as we receive it. It looks just like some fake money passed last month in Scott County. Tonight, police in Montgomery County are trying to figure out who passed a counterfeit bill over the weekend. Take a look at this. You can see motion picture use only printed on this fake $100 bill. Police tell us someone used the bill over the weekend at a Montgomery County restaurant. Georgetown police are also investigating a case just like this. Victor Puente takes a closer look at the bills in our top story at 530. This $100 bill is identical to some bills that were passed in Georgetown last month. Not only is the serial number the same, but so is the warning printed on it that it's only meant to be used for making movies. This past weekend wasn't a particularly busy one for the subway in Camargo. The heavy snow shut the business down on Friday. There was only one employee Saturday. When they went to make their deposit Monday morning, they discovered they'd made even less money than they thought. We found out that we had a counterfeit $100 bill. Janie says their tracking allowed them to narrow the purchase down to around 6.30 Saturday night. It just looks like $100 bill, but on the back side it says the motion pictures use only. It was a bill he recognized. We were like, wow. Because we reported on four Georgetown businesses that accepted them last month. We seen it on the news on December the 28th on WKYT. He says while management had seen the report, that employee had not. He also says they didn't have a counterfeit pin at the register. We did not, and that's where we, we got trapped. A mistake they were quick to fix. They're working with the sheriff's department to identify that person using surveillance video. Until they're caught, he does have a message for other businesses. You don't take more than $20 bill, that's really good, but if you do take it, make sure you have a, you let your employee know. Montgomery County Sheriff Fred Shortridge tells me his detectives will be contacting Georgetown police to see if there are any other connections to these cases aside from that fake money. In Montgomery County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Georgetown police say they haven't had any other reports of that fake money since December. County leaders say it is the worst they've ever seen. Today, road crews in Owsley County are still trying to clean up after this weekend's winter storm. The county saw more than a foot and a half of snow. Mike Linden talked to county leaders about how long it will take to clean up. It's the worst I've seen since I've worked here. Carolyn Sizemore has worked at the Owsley County Courthouse for 22 years. She says she can't remember a worse winter. Uh, these roads and the county roads, the little off roads and stuff, they've just been, it's, it's bad. For one of the smallest counties in the state, it's been a tough job for county road crews to clean up after Mother Nature. We, we knew the forecast, and you think you're ready, but you're not. <laughs> you're never ready for this much snow. McIntosh says even though some roads have been cleared in the county, others still remain snow covered. And he says even with melting of the snow, it's still pretty deep in most spots in the county. County officials say they can't seem to catch a break from heavy snow recently. Last winter we got uh, officially hit was 14, but in places we had around 20 inches. Uh, but overall, this is probably the largest snow that's come in at least 20, 24, five years. With more than 150 miles of narrow rural roads countywide, crews are working as fast as they can. Well, we're just a small county, and, and you know we we can't really afford the help that we need, and so everyone, everybody's had to pitch in. In Owsley County, Mike Linden, WKYT. 
And the Owsley County Judge Executive says road crews should be finished clearing the county by the weekend. Crews in southern Kentucky are having similar problems. Road crews in Rockcastle County still working around the clock plowing snow covered roads. The county's road supervisor says as of now they have about 90% of the roads clear. The supervisor says the county does not use typical plow trucks, they use six pickup trucks. County Judge Doug Bishop. He tells me that we're going to uh, get some bigger trucks and be ready, more equipped for this type of catastrophe in the future. Schools in the county were closed again today. Officials say classes will resume once all the school bus routes are okay to travel. Crews hope to have all the roads in Rockcastle County cleared by Thursday. Well, the rain that we saw helped much of that snow melt in parts of the state, but it also brought along some colder air. We could even see some snow flurries. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has an early look at the forecast. Chris? Yeah, seeing a few of those flakes that are flying out there now, and you know, for the poor folks who still have. Uh, as Mike was showing us, a fairly deep snowpack on the ground. All that rain did last night to that snowpack in some areas is just make that snow that much heavier. That snow is like a sponge soaking up the light rains that were falling last night and early this morning. Temperatures have been falling ever since. And look at that Mountain Parkway, Kim. Look at all the snow that is still on the ground there. Not a whole lot left in Lexington or Frankfort outside of the areas where we had the drifts. And uh, into the Covington, Cincinnati area around Florence, not a whole lot of action. Your Defender Radar Network, still some flakes flying across parts of southeastern Kentucky. Lexington Metro, a couple of snow flurries that are out there. Back edge of the steadier uh, bands of precipitation now working southeast of the Mountain Parkway. If you're out this evening, you will see a snowflake or two as temperatures drop toward the freezing mark and even into the upper 20s by 11 o'clock. Once we hit 32 degrees, obviously watch out. Some icy spots will develop on area roads as we get in on some refreezing. We're going to stay on the chilly side for the next several days. Then the weekend bounces into town, and we've got a big temperature bounce that will follow suit. And we're talking about the warmest air we've had since December. Coming up in the seven-day forecast in a few. Chris, thank you. Firefighters in eastern Kentucky are looking for a couple missing after their home went up in flames. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Pike County. The fire happened early this morning on the Dameron Strait stretch of US 460. Firefighters say an elderly couple lived in the home, but they haven't found that couple just yet. There's unconfirmed reports of uh, two victims uh, still being in the home. Uh, we're also, we're uh, in the district of firefighting operation. We're also conducting the search. Uh, just uh, to make sure that there wasn't nobody in the residence, but, but uh, we're looking around to uh, see if we can find anybody. State police are helping firefighters search the home for the couple or clues that may lead to their whereabouts. Firefighters are not sure what started that fire. In Breathitt County, a CSX railroad is closed after a train derailed. The Jackson Fire Chief says the two locomotives pulling the train went off the tracks this morning in the Alto community after hitting a large boulder. The chief believes the boulder fell from a cliff near the tracks. Two CSX employees were treated for minor injuries. New tonight, a Bullitt County man faces charges after police say he left a cell phone in the men's restroom of a Louisville Chick-fil-A to record people. According to an arrest warrant, 31-year-old Brian Wilson propped up his phone on a cabinet in the bathroom earlier this month. A Chick-fil-A employee found the phone and gave it to a manager. Police say that when they searched the phone, they found an app where Wilson shared nude photos online. Wilson faces five counts of video voyeurism. State police are looking for an inmate accused of walking away from a halfway house in Covington. Troopers say 32-year-old Joseph Smith left the Transitions Treatment Center in Covington on Sunday. Smith's last known address was in Louisville, but he also used to live in Grant County. Troopers say Smith has several tattoos on his arms. He was originally in jail on drug-related charges. Fayette County school leaders spent the day in Frankfort discussing the controversial issue of charter schools with lawmakers. Outside organizations run charter schools, which are publicly funded and open to anyone. They don't have to follow rules like class size requirements and traditional school calendars. Lawmakers haven't issued a charter bill yet, but supporters are planning to propose a five year pilot program in Lexington and Louisville. A lot of the schools, the companies that are moving into the urban areas now are the college prep schools. They do a very good job often for the children that gain access to those schools. Critics say charter schools pull tax dollars away from public schools. They also worry that the privatization of charter schools puts profit ahead of pupils. Republicans in Kentucky will hold a caucus on March 5th, and we have a voter with a timely question. 
Lynn of Lexington has our good question tonight. She says, how do you, those of us who are registered Republican vote in the caucus in March? Will we go to the same polling places we have used for all other elections? For an answer, I went straight to the top of the Republican Party in Kentucky. Mike Biaggi is executive director. Every Republican voter has been assigned to one caucus location where they may vote, which can be found on the Republican Party of Kentucky's website. He says the voter location search tool is now active on Kentucky's Republican Party caucus website. That's at rpk.org slash caucus. And right there, you'll click on where on that button to find exactly where you vote. So on caucus day, March 5th, Republican voters will go to county caucus locations anytime between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. to vote for a Republican nominee for president by secret ballot. Presidential caucus locations are different from the usual polling locations. So a typical county will have a single caucus location for all of its Republican voters. A few of the more populous counties, like Fayette County, will have multiple locations. But that website is up now, and you can click on that button, find out exactly where you need to go. To submit a question on our Good Question segment, go to goodquestion at WKYT.com. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray is entering the race for Kentucky's U.S. Senate. And the governor is preparing for tonight's State of the Budget Address. Bill Bryan has details on the bottom line. Good evening. Republicans have quickly jumped on Lexington Mayor Jim Gray's entry into the Democratic U.S. Senate primary race today, and it happened just minutes after he filed. In a video release, Gray, who has been elected and reelected in Fayette County, says he wants to make Washington work again. And he took a swipe at incumbent Republican Rand Paul in an obvious reference to Paul's presidential campaign, referring to putting personal ambitions ahead of Kentucky interests. Gray will first have to stand out in a crowded Democratic primary, but the Republican Senate Campaign Committee quickly aimed its fire at him, saying, quote, Gray will be sunk by Obamacare, the war on coal, and the rest of Barack Obama's toxic agenda, end quote. Paul, who is now dealing with a race at home, as well as his pursuit of the White House, is holding a conference call with political reporters this evening. Eyes are shifting toward Frankfurt for tonight's budget address by the state's new Republican Governor, Matt Bevan. The governor says he will address those underfunded state pensions. The teacher's retirement fund alone needs a billion dollar boost. Bevan says he won't increase taxes to deal with pensions, but he says money can be identified. He lays it out at 7 o'clock tonight in an address to a joint session of lawmakers. It airs live on KET, and you can find a link to the live stream on WKYT.com. The presidential candidates back out on the trail. Democrats Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Martin O'Malley are fresh off last night Tonight's town hall debate in Iowa. Republicans are also battling with more terse talk between frontrunners Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. The caucus is next Monday night. The filing deadline passed in Kentucky at 4 o'clock this afternoon with lots of competitive matchups now set. Democratic State Representative Leslie Combs of Pikeville decided not to seek another term. And polls close shortly in London where voters have been deciding today whether to expand alcohol sales. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Kentucky officials say they will not fight a federal court ruling that supports a tax incentive for a religious theme park in northern Kentucky. The state originally offered the tax breaks to ARC and Counter, then withdrew the offer, saying the park planned to discriminate job applicants based on religion. A spokeswoman for the governor says that the state has no plans to appeal. She also added that they are pleased with the ruling. The ARC Encounter is scheduled to open July 7th in Williamstown.